What's up, everybody? I'm Kyle Carlson, and this is the Rollback BMX Podcast, the number one BMX podcast in the universe, according to me. This week's guest is that guy who goes really high and usually doesn't wear a shirt. That's right, Larry Edgar. Larry and I caught up a couple days ago during the X Games qualifier in Boise, Idaho. I always knew that Larry had a bit of a rough upbringing, but I had no idea how rough it was. It makes it that much more impressive that he's been able to find the success and positivity that he has. Don't take my word for it. Listen to what Larry has to say. And here is the Rollback BMX podcast with Larry Edgar. And we're talking. Larry <laughs> Edgar. What's up, man? Uh, nothing. You just bought me coffee and thank you for that. I need to get paid back. It was like 10 grand. Oh, Jesus. So let's start uh, a while back here. Um, Edgar isn't your last name. Uh, yeah. Nah, um, is, is it legally changed or is it still? No, I just went by Edgar because uh, my birth father's last name is, uh, well, like technically not my birth father, but his, the guy that raised me, his last name is Edgar. And um, on my birth certificate, last name is Sergeant. Sergeant. Yeah. And that's a pretty crazy story, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, if you want to go into detail, I'm I mean, not really worried. Why not? Um, so, like, my mom was pregnant with me, and um, I think my biological father, or wait, no, rewind. So, my mom was pregnant with me, and it was with a different guy other than my biological father. I don't know where he ran off to. And, um... That guy pretty much said... If, so, so did you never know your biological father? No. Okay. No, my, my dad's my dad. Though. Yeah, he yeah, raised yeah, me yeah. And everything. Okay. But um, that guy pretty much said if his last name isn't on the birth certificate, that he's going to kill her. Kill your mom. Yeah. So she was obviously like, your last name's on the birth certificate. That's pretty easy. <laughs> like Easy choice. Yeah. Um, and, he, and that guy, like, he's not like my dad. He's not my sister's dad. Nothing. Like, he was just... Some random scumbag. She didn't have very good taste in men. How how long ago, uh, or how long was he around? Oh, I don't think it was that long at all. I think like you don't remember him. No, 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 no. He was he was long gone before I was even born. Okay. Yeah. Huh. That's a, a strange deal. I, I can't. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you'd want your name on a family that you weren't even going to be dedicated to. He was like a nar, like a motorcycle gang dude or something, right? Yeah. So when he said I'm going to murder you, it actually means something. It probably did. Yeah. I mean. Uh, yeah. So so from there, your real dad comes in. Yeah, my um, your your yeah, the my, guy that was your father. Yeah, yeah, your father. My, yeah, my father that raised me came in, and all kinds of weird stuff happened. And then we ended up in foster care at one point. And my father now is like the only reason why, like me and my sister got out of well, both my sisters got out of foster care, and like my mom kind of pulled her stuff together for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So your dad is he still in Southern California? Yep. And you guys still hang out and talk? Oh, yeah, yeah. Me and my dad are awesome. Yeah. And your mom is? Uh, she passed away when I was six. Okay. Yeah. So it's been pretty much you and your dad. Yeah, just me and my dad. Yeah. What was what was that like? I know you had, uh, growing up with just your dad, living in cars and stuff. I know it was a, it was rough for a while. Yeah. It's, we, like, my dad kind of just, I, I don't know, like, he didn't give up, per se, when my mom passed, but I don't, I don't think he was too stoked on life for a while. It was really hard. Yeah. Life. Yeah, I'm understandable. He, he'll never, he'll never admit to that. But like looking back now, I'm like, like having friends that pass and family that pass. I'm like, damn, I could see why he was kind of like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but he always made sure like I, I went to school or I had bike parts or or whatever he needed to do, if it was necessary. Like I, he was not going to go out and like you need a new PlayStation. He was just like whatever. Like he he got me my first bike. Yeah. So made sure you had a place to sleep. Yeah. Made sure you weren't getting beat up. <sighs> dad stuff yeah yeah dad stuff definitely but then he eventually kind of he's, he's back on track and yeah he's, he's got a house now and so he's still working every single day what, what does like, he do he's a mechanic okay where where does he live he lives out in Hemet. oh shit so he's like a couple hours from you no not like he's hour like and a half 20 minutes is that it yeah i guess i don't know where Hemet is yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's the first stop um on the bus state like first bus station out of uh is it banning prison or beaumont prison one of those two yeah, I just found that out like a month ago. I asked my brother, I was like, why do you live in Hemet? And he's like, oh, it was the first bus stop from prison. Huh, that's a pretty good reason. I was like, I guess. all right. I mean, they probably give you the bus ticket that far or something. Yeah, right? like he was like, I'm just, as soon as I get off this, out of this prison, I'm just, like, I'm just getting to the first place, I guess. So you have a brother and two sisters? Yeah, I have a brother from like a whole different mom and stuff. He's pretty much like stepbrother and then. Same dad though. Yeah, and okay. then my, my sisters have a different father. Okay. Yeah. 
So I know I've met your one sister that's been to events and stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, she she helped me out a bunch, Michelle. Where where does she live? Um, she now is actually living up in Northern California. She just got a new job, moved up there. Nice. And the other sister I disown, so we'll just not talk about her. Okay. Well, that's a pretty uh, interesting family situation. So you're good with your one sister, your brother, and your dad? Yep. You guys are all tight? Yeah, we're all right. Everything's good? Yeah. What's your brother do? Um, he's actually installing security systems, oddly enough. That is, that is <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. I was like, ah. Oh. What was he in prison for? Are we not talking about that? Oh, uh, uh, fighting and drugs. Yeah. Just standard bullshit. Yeah, he did like 15 years. Oh, and, wow. Um, How old is he? 35 or 36. And how old is your, one, your sister that you're close with? 34 or 35. One of those. They're close in age. And you're the youngest? Yeah. Was your other sister younger than you? Or? Nah, she was um, just older than me, younger than my other sister. So how have they dealt with your dad as well, seeing you find success in, in BMX? I mean, that's a pretty big, pretty big leap from this rough upbringing to all of a sudden you're <laughs> Competing in the X Games and winning, winning these Vans events and literally just like a world-renowned dude for what you do and what you like. My dad just, I don't know. He, I mean, I don't. He doesn't show emotion too well. Like I don't know. It's, yeah, I think it's like a marine thing. He's just like, cool, good job. <laughs> My sister is like, I think she's like the overly proud sister sometimes, you know. But like, I I love her. Like she just, she gets super stoked, but. That's better than the alternative. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. No, it's a good yeah, thing. Yeah. My, my dad, yeah. My dad's, um, I I would say he's proud, I think. But, like, he, he's definitely stoked for me. Like, I have my, like, I got a house. And, like, I'm the only person in my family that's never been to jail. Okay. Um, I'd like to keep it that way as long as possible. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good goal. Yeah. And, um, like, I've, I've never had to, like, mooch off him or anything, like. I think I lived with him like the least amount of out of everybody in my family. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I haven't tried to like stab him or anything like my other sister, so that's good. That's generally a plus. Yeah. <laughs> how did you, how did you end up getting into BMX in the midst of all that all craziness? Right. I used to ride skateboards and I'd go to, um, 6th Street Skate Park in Corona, mm-hmm. the j- j- junky little skate park. I love that place. Is that the one with like kind of has like a rolly spine? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, no yeah. coping. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You feel like you're probably going to get stabbed. Yeah. Yeah, another place. It's great. Um, I grew up skateboarding there. I always had fun. Skateboards are fun. And uh, seeing a guy go, like, pretty high on a bike over, like, that gap in the middle. Yeah. And ever since then, I was like, I want a bike, Dad. And he's like, oh, I can't really afford that. And then a few years go by, I turned 13, and he got me a Hoffman 18-inch. Nice. And then... Was that the right size for you at the time, or was yeah, that small? Yeah, I was like, dude, I'm a little guy. <laughs> yeah. They were heavy, but I, I rode that thing forever. And then uh, that thing got stolen. Yeah, out of the Motel 6 in Corona. <laughs> That's where you were living at the time? Yep, Motel 6. And then how did you get another bike from there? Um, we actually went to Foo down at Epic and Travis Arraz to help me out, actually. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, a long time ago, I, I got a Fit. It was all black with white wheels. I remember it. It was sick. That thing, um, I had that thing forever. It was sweet. And then... Me and Nick Telez one time were um, playing video games in his house in Eastvale, and like we had the door, the garage door kind of cracked open, not all the way open, and someone came in there and stole my bike, but not his. And then um, how pissed was your dad? Yeah, well, he wasn't too mad. He's just like things happen, and um, yeah. probably a week later, like we went and ordered another bike. So like now my dad's pretty broke, but Foo hooked us up. I t- told him it happened. We a week later, we go to 65th Skate Park, and uh, my Nick, bike's mine. Yeah, my bike's there. No way. No stickers on it. I'm like, Nick, that's my bike. So Nick goes over there and punches the dude in the face. Not even a word. Do you think the dude took it, or do you think it was a dude that... No, the dude definitely took it. We yeah. called the cops. Cops came, and the kid's known for stealing stuff. And um, they they the cops were pretty mad at us because we kind of started a fight about it. And um, so we showed him pictures on my phone of like me riding it, obviously. Yeah. And the cops like, Oh, that is your bike. <laughs> and so like, they're like, what do you want to press charges? We're like, no. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to take him to his mom. I'm like me and Nick pretty much said, you could just leave him here. There'll yeah. be no problem. And uh, he, he wouldn't leave him at the park. That's probably a, one of the few good things you hear of cops doing. Yeah. So he, he, I was like, that's just a slap on the wrist. Like this is, it's, Almost Grand Theft Auto at that point. That's over a thousand or two thousand. The cops probably don't realize that because isn't it? I, I think just, I grew up in Nevada, but I think yeah. it was 
seven hundred or seven fifty yeah. or something. Anything over that was like, so it was just like a, a problem. A, it was like, oh, you stole the bike, but that was a B and E that the bike was in a house. Yeah, you went in. You went in the garage. Like that's. He should have just whatever. He should have at least fucking took him a night in jail. Something scared him. Yeah, just dude, scare yeah. him at least. So at that point, were you pretty good at riding? You were getting getting better and nah, I. I mean, I could do like toe ups and stuff, but yeah, uh, little stuff. And then I think later on, moving into compound days, where I started riding there a lot. Um, did, you, did you ride there when it was real ride, or was that before your time? That was like right before my time. Okay, like, I I would always go next door at Paris Auto Speedway because me and my dad would always like race circle track. Okay, gotcha. Third track over there. It's actually oval, but whatever. And um, so I'm going there. Um, Shane Gillen. From the compound. Yeah, of course. Had hookups with SM. Shane, Shane Dog, I yeah, believe. Shane Dog. Is the, the proper name. Yeah. <laughs> I love that dude. He's awesome. He's always helped me out. Like I, I've slept at compound a few times and nice. He let me open, he let me close as anytime I need. And um he always feed me too. Um so he had an S and M hookup? Yeah, and I, he did, he got me like an LTF and then I had a LA, LAF, then an LTF, like Kind of started giving me deals there. Were you, were you buying them or was it like a flow deal? We still buy them, but it was like cost. So that yeah. was cool. And I think like Moeller was like, yeah, no, you could hook them up. So it was cool that he was, I was young. I didn't realize what was happening. I was just like, cool. Like we we're still paying for it. So it was like, obviously like whether you have no money or like a little bit of money, if you still pay for something. It sucks. Like totally. It's just like. Even if like the bike was six hundred and they're like, Oh, we'll bump it to three hundred and you have a hundred, it's like I still can't yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah. Like it'd be like right now if somebody came and was like, How would you like to get this Ferrari? Yeah, I'd be like, All right, man, eight eighty five grand. It's like yeah. oh, that's a crazy deal, but I, I can't I, do it. I, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like it, it was cool. My dad was stoked on that and um just kept riding. I actually used to ride brakes and no pegs. <laughs> Yeah. Lots do you, do you feel like at this point in your life, riding BMX would help you stay out of some of the, the shitty situations that you've kind of been surrounded by? 100%. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I didn't grow up in the greatest of areas. Like, it's not obviously not, like, the worst, but I definitely had a, plenty of open doors just to do bullshit like everybody else in Riverside. Yeah. And I just, like, I don't know. Like, it, it never occurred to me. Like, I just, all I did was look at it was, like, when is school going to be out so I can go to the skate park? Yeah. When is my dad going to be done talking to this guy so I can go to the skate park? <laughs> like, I never looked at, like, well, I should just steal stuff because I can get it for free. I just was like, when can I go to the skate park? Yeah. That, <laughs> that was it. It owned your mind. That was all that I thought about. Did you think your dad got that? Do you think he understood that this was a positive thing that was keeping you out of trouble? I I think so. I, I really do. Like, we, we used to bicker about it and stuff because, I mean, it was like my life. I would annoy the shit out of my dad to go to the skate park. Yeah. Like, He'd be working. I'm like, can you take me to the skate park? And it was like a 35 minute drive. Like, okay, so you weren't pedaling distance. No, I I rode there a few times though. No, it's probably a couple hour ride. Yeah, it sucked. Yeah, it, it was. But I think it was like for free flow tour. And my dad was like not understanding. But I was like, Dad, this is it's in my in, in my eyes. I was like, this is my break, Dad. And he's like, No, nah, I'm working. I'm not taking you. And so I got fed up, and I just turned my phone off. And I like back when you did like prepaid minutes <laughs> and I just, um, flip phone gang and I, I just pedaled there. It was, it was like a 35 from Corona, like in Lincoln on the 91 all the way. I rode up through Corona, um, got to Van Buren and then I went up Van Buren a little bit, went through the orange groves to Washington, Washington up to Van Buren again. Cause I wanted to skip that huge hill that there's no bike lane <laughs> and, um, Pedaled up Van Buren all the way, like right before the freeway, and then I cut over to Markham and rode down through there. It, was, it definitely took me like two hours or something. That's hard. I mean, that's a decent drive. Yeah, I never really thought about it. Just it's again, like it's one of those things when it's just you and your bike. It's just like peace, like music. Yeah. Like, you just get going. When you were around that age and had been riding for a little while and had a few bikes and whatnot. Were you following BMX, watching videos, reading magazines? Like, were you aware there's a potential future here? Or were you kind of just I wasn't, having fun? Yeah, I was just having fun. I wasn't really, never thought like, oh, you can make a lot of money from BMX. Like, that never, I just kept watching props. And I was like, all those dudes in that bus look like they're having so much fun. Yeah. Like, that looks fun. Like, even like the funny crashes or like the random stuff, like all of it just looked like, I was like, I just want that. Like, I just, I think it was just like. 
kind of not really growing up with a family, I was like, that's like, to me, that's like, that could be my family. Yeah. Like, it's cool. So. Yeah. That's, th- those guys did a really good job creating those videos and creating a vibe. I want it back. Yeah. Yeah. It's so I, hard, I think man. Jason's doing that with his Fast and Loose crew. Yeah, hopefully, man. Yeah, th- we need it. Yeah. <laughs> it was so cool back then because everybody had different sponsors, but their sponsors would support them to go on the trips and stuff, you know, whereas now I think everybody's so hungry for content, for social media and whatnot, they're not going to pay to put you on a bus with guys that ride a different bike. You know, it's no. so it's so rare. Some companies would, but like, I don't know. It's just... We need to all remember we're in the same boat. We are. This, oh, this, this uh, is the same boat. Rising, rising tide raises all boats or whatever. You know, like there's there's not a situation where bike company A is fucking crushing it yeah. and bike company B is failing miserably. You know what I mean? It's like bikes are bikes are hot or bikes aren't hot. So at what point? So you go to ride this free flow. How'd you do with that? Did you win? I think that's the one I won. And then I, I went to the park one in Utah. It was pretty cool. That's why. Was I, that when they had at the Dew Tour? Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And Brock Rayford was there. Little Sean Canny. Yeah. The little guy. Yeah. 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 Like, all that. And then the second one was who, the who, dirt one. Who won the uh, overall? Utah. Mm. Is that the one that Mike Payne won? No. He won one in Utah. I can't remember. It was the park one. I can't remember who did win that. I think it was like Rob Armour because Rob Armour was in it. Okay. Yeah. He can do tricks. He's insane. Still can do tricks. Yeah. yeah. That was, um, Brock Rayford was there and threw up the spine and knocked himself out. Oh, man. Yeah. I dude, that. was that the one that uh, Devin Smiley wrote in and had a Panda Express jersey? Yeah, dude. Do you remember that? <laughs> oh, that was good, man. <laughs> he had a knee brace on and like, oh, man. Devin's the man. I remember him doing a bar bar tap and I was like, what the Dude, was he was that? doing that shit back when people weren't doing that I was shit. Like, I Devin's could, always been so good. I could barely do a turn down. He's <laughs> over here doing this thing. So they paid your trip to Utah. Yeah. Was that, that kind of like the first big trip you kind of got The first time I left California. Wow. And uh, Were I, you like, what, 16, 17? 16. And my dad, my dad, I don't think, really has ever been on an airplane. He hates airplanes and stuff. And uh, Actually, I think the only airplane he was ever on was in the Marines, and that's why he hates airplanes. I understand. Um uh, so, like, he drops me off at the airport. He's like, all right, have fun. I, d- I didn't know what I was getting into at all. Like, I didn't I didn't even think I had an ID then. <laughs> I get there and... Is this L.A. or where are you at? No, I was Ontario International, okay, luckily. Yeah. <laughs> so, dropped me off and I had no idea what I was doing. I just went up there and told her my name. And she was nice enough and helped me find my flight. got there. And I, mind you, I didn't even... I told my dad they paid for my trip. So, he's expecting, like, food and everything and all that. So, you showed up with nothing. No money at all. Yeah. Yeah, nothing. And um, and by paid for the trip, they meant flight and hotel. Mm-hmm. Luckily, gotcha. the hotel. But I didn't have a credit card, so the lady was like, we need something on file. But she's nice enough and put her card on file. That's cool. Yeah. And I Actually, out there, I met uh, Philip Rinaldi, who now works at yeah, Full yeah, Factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. that's where all that happened. It was oh, great. it's awesome. Yeah. I didn't realize you knew him that long. Yeah, yeah. I've known him for a long time. Met Caleb Kwan back there, too. I yep. blew all his spokes out when he rode for Shadow. Because <laughs> he was, like, running into my tire over and over again. So I shoved my peg in his spokes, and he fell. And got oh. super pissed at me. That sounds accurate. Yeah. That's it. I'm going to get face tattoos. <laughs> 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 it's crazy. It, it's crazy looking back at... Uh, you know, I think that says a bit about how important amateur contests are. Because you go to this event, and there's all these guys there that 10, 11 years later... So many of them are still involved, yeah. and you, we still see them. You know, yeah. I think it's cool about like you were out there at Chase Ox Jam the other day in San Diego. You yeah. know, it's just like I, I enjoy that because that that was me like not that long ago. That's I took my cousin and he was so amped like this is his first contest. Dude, dude your cousin's kind of a badass, dude. He's, he's sick. Huh? He's yeah, yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of them too. Well, the other one has a normal job now. He's he's working up north. Like he's getting all like going to school and. Doing all this stuff to become a like a industrial refrigeration mechanic. Okay, so that's pretty big deal. That but sounds like a legitimate yeah, job. Yeah, he's yeah, still yeah. riding hard though. It's um proud of both those dudes. Do you ride with uh with Kyle a lot? A lot now, yeah. He only lives like five minutes from me, dude. That's so I just pick him up and I'm like, all right, you buy coffee, we go to the skate park. Like, yeah, that's the deal. It was cool because I was talking to the guys that were judging. It was like a uh, uh what Corey Martinez and. Uh, Nathan Williams, Biz, and they were like, oh, this guy's awesome. He's like Larry. I was like, it's actually his cousin. Like, nobody even knew. But he was like, he was killing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, was, that makes me, he'd be stoked on that, I hope. Yeah. No, it's funny. Because when I first saw him, too, he's riding with that gold helmet. You know what I mean? It's just like. He almost got the American flag one. I was like, you better fucking wait, dude. <laughs> 
So your first sponsor, was your first real sponsor Volume Demolition? Yeah, um, Alfredo Mancuso. Actually, I just found this out like a year ago or something, was actually buying all the parts and giving them to me. No way. Yeah. So you weren't actually writing for Volume Demolition? I think he bought like my first frame and fork and stuff. Is this back when he wrote for them? Yeah. So he probably got at least the yeah, he got a homies homie deal up. of all time. Yeah. So... Thank you, Alfredo. That was that's cool. Very Usually, nice when you hear stories about him, they end up being bad. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's really all cool. I've been hearing lately, and I I've only had good encounters with him. But I mean, I haven't seen or talked to him in years. But I always liked the guy. He still looks like a character off Jersey Shore, though. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for my frame, Alfredo. Yeah, I that's really, really cool, man. That. Yeah, he hooked it up, and then and then Castillo did eventually hook you up. Yeah, yeah, he okay. did. And then um, just um chris fox hit me up about supercross and stuff and was like oh you want to come on supercross like that'd be sweet there's like a cabin up here we could like have a place to live and all kinds of cool stuff oh no way yeah, yeah. Was where like, was where was that in wrightwood but i never actually stayed there <laughs> but they owned a cabin they let the riders stay nah, i was actually chris fox's parents but he was i think he was kind of saying you could live with me but i didn't yeah but it was cool were, um, they, were they paying you no, no. So you were on volume hookup deal, and then you yeah. went. Were you on Supercross and Demolition, or were you on uh, just? We you, you tried were... that, I think, and they were like, they said no. Okay, but um, Supercross was awesome. Bill was like such like he he listened to everything we had to say and, and changed it. Is that who Peraza was on as well? Yeah, he was on, and Matt too, and Joey and Chris. Like oh, how crazy! Like, that's a fucking yeah. badass team. Yeah, Peraza was on there. I think. Both Peraza. Uh, I think David was too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and then I, that that kind of got me more fired up into racing. Which, like, everything happens for a reason, so that's probably why, like, I learned a lot of bike controls from essentially being on that team, and I, I got more into racing, so I went to races and started riding track when I was, like, 17. Did you hit find any success? Did you race at a pro level or anything? Or I, I don't think I ever really knew oh, you no. raced. Okay. No, no, it was just fun. Like, just like anything, it was just fun, and they were like, oh, yeah, well, you're going to start training and this and this, and it was, like, 17, 18 expert was pretty much pro. Yeah. And I was like... yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I kind of just like trying to triple in the rhythm section. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. funny, man. That's such a, a kind of a common story amongst uh, the guys with really good bike control. Anderson has a similar story. Like, yeah, but he was actually fast. But I, 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 just, I mean, I mean, in the sense of just being like this kind of gets too organized and you get to that level where it's yeah. like, well, the next step is this. And it's like, I'm having fun doing bullshit. <laughs> yeah, like seeing how far I can manual is, is yeah, always yeah, yeah. fun. So, when you quit racing, did the Supercross deal end? No, um, I got, so Chris ended up riding for Demolition and stuff, and then went separate ways, and then Essie, he rode for Essie, and then he yeah. was like, hey, come over here, so. So, you went from Supercross to Essie? Yeah, I always looked up to Chris. I met him when I was like 15 or something. He's he's a couple years older than you? Uh, I think he's 28. That sounds right. Somewhere in there. And what are you right now? 24. Almost 25. Damn, that's half of 50. You're getting old, dude. Yeah. <laughs> getting old. So then so then you go to SE. Yeah. That was fun. And at this point, I think when you first kind of got on, I remember the first time I saw videos and whatnot of you, you were riding for volumes. You started getting some coverage then, but I think you were kind of just like the good 16-year-old kid. Yeah. He could do 16. He can do a triple whip. This is cool. <laughs> um, and then I think... You were on SE when you were kind of like, oh, this is a real motherfucker. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think the first thing that really opened my eyes to you, and I've always known you were a good rider, but maybe it was the the second to last Texas Toast. Yeah. Maybe you I won or you got a podium or something. I went to one, and it was it was like the, one of the best contests I ever went to, and I miss it. Yeah. Like, so much. But I, I remember I'd never seen anybody do like a proper like three no hand at a table. Yeah. And you were doing them. Was that you were on SE at the time, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It was. Was that the first paying sponsor you had? No, technically, Solon Clothing I think paid me like a hundred dollars a month or something at one point. Yeah, that's crazy. Is yeah. that brand still around? Yeah, they're, they're just like uh, tattoos now. Okay, like, they don't do anything with uh, like BMX or I think they do stuff with like cage fighters. But oh, really? Yeah. Are they out Riverside area? Is no, that... they're from Huntington Beach. Okay. Yeah. I remember that dude, was it, is it Dennis Martin? Yep. That was the team manager yeah. for that. that super, super cool dude, man. That guy really? worked at, um, yeah, he was, he's still an awesome dude. I still keep in touch, but he worked at um, the compound and he, okay. would, he would always like, 
he would always like ride with me and teach me stuff. And he was a good rider too. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he yeah. shredded his suicide no handers with like like nasty dog so shit. Yeah, sick, he uh, he was good friends with Mike Cleveland. I remember Cleveland. I was, I was good friends with Mike Cleveland. Back yeah, in the day, Mike so is then. hilarious, dude. He used to talk so much crap to me all the time. Probably helped you grow up, right? Yeah, no, nah, he was kind of like the big brother figure at the skate park. I didn't see him too much, but. When he was there, he was, that was just, probably oh, he's giving me crap. Right around, you were probably coming up when he was getting out of it a little bit. Yeah, like I, th- I remember that ad he was watching, washing uh, the Subaru, washing Mira's car. I don't think it was Dave's car because that's uh, when he, he worked at a Subaru dealership. Ah, uh, I thought it was. What did it say? Like the whole time, it had like a little caption above his. I head. remember it was a weird ad. It was it like was his, hilarious. I think it was his too. first Mirico ad. I gave him so much crap because he kept giving me crap. So I was like, "Dude, I got a car for you to wash. Like, you can get out there in your bikini." <laughs> he looked at me like. I was uh, literally like three days ago. I was driving from, uh, you know, that new Linda Vista skate park. Yeah, I was driving from my house to Linda Vista, and some random like two door Kia like passed me and started honking at me, and I was like, "What the fuck?" And I looked out the window. He rolled down the window, and it was Mike Cleveland in like a suit and tie, huh? I can't remember. I haven't seen, I haven't seen, I haven't seen him in over a year. You know, I, I don't talk to him. I heard he just road bikes now. Yeah, no, he's awesome. I, I, I caught up with him for a while at. Uh, Dave Mirra's memorial, which is a shitty reason to get together, but it was good to hang out. But uh, actually seeing him there was was nice to chat, and then seeing him the other day was like, holy shit, that's the last person I expected to see this morning. Yeah, I remember that dude, he was crazy. I remember like him and Thomas Hancock. Yeah. I was like my big brother. He taught me so Thomas much. was. Yeah, he taught me how to tell up. Okay. Yeah, um, but they were like, was it um, Am something, like back in the day? Uh there's some like rider spotlight, like Am Spotlight, and it was like Thomas Hancock and Mike Cleveland riding Point X Camp back in the day. Oh, really? Yeah, it popped up on YouTube. I had to give it a watch. How did you know Thomas Hancock just from riding the the compound? Yeah, I was like, I've known him, dude, since before I could turn down. Wow. Yeah, like uh, he was there since like day one at the skate park and. Like grew like super close to him and his father and like yeah, kind of like like Brian Olivas like would watch his kids all the time and I'd like help babysit him and I was at his house like I spent the night like a week before he passed. No it's, shit, yeah, it sucked. And he Fuck. was just, he was just so stoked. He was like, "This is what I love like just riding with my friend because we we're just riding like a manual pad. It was like some janky manual pad. Yeah. But it's just like." It doesn't matter where you ride. It's like the company you're with. You 100%. can make anything fun. Like, yeah. I remember maybe the last time I saw him before he died was at a dirt jumping contest in Vegas. And I hadn't seen him. thing, dude. Were you with that? <laughs> yep. He I was remember. riding my bike because he broke his. Dude, I just remember like Thomas just like the way he looked. He was such a 909 douchebag. But the nicest. And then like you talk to him dude. and you're like, how is this this dude? The like, nicest the coolest, human. coolest, nicest like, guy, Best man. outlook. Like, and then he rides his bike and he has good style. He's yeah. not just like Mr. fucking Huck it. 909. I wish this was a dirt bike. Like yeah, super dude. steezy. Like, man, good dude. That's like. He, Probably like the, like one of the best like 360 unlookbacks I've yeah. ever seen. And then straight into like a flip whip. Yeah. I'm like, well, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Car crash? Yeah, he um, fell asleep at the wheel or something. Fell asleep. He was only a mile from his wife and two kids. Damn, dude. And they say like statistics, you like get more comfortable the closer you get to home, I and get then you that, pass yeah. out. I drive by his um, like memorial quite a bit. My dad drives by it every day. It's Damn. so he cleans it up and stuff. That's cool. I, I, I like give him a shirt. Like I've been giving him van shirts. I know he like never really wore vans, but I put van shirts <laughs> on his like thing. And I, I think I'm going to go put my gold helmet out there. That's sick. Yeah. I was like, my, that, that helmet kind of like, kind of now means a lot to me because like I, that was like the best I've done so far in my career wise was with that dumb thing on. Yeah. It, was it only one gold helmet? Yeah. It's the same one. You know, what's funny is I remember talking to you about the gold helmet before you got it. Yeah. Being like psyched about, I'm going to get this gold helmet. And I'm like, <laughs> whatever, dude. Then you got it. And I was like, it's actually cool. Yeah. Everyone, <laughs> everyone gives me crap. Now they just give me crap about the American flag one. And I'm just like, whatever. People give you crap about the gold one. Then you go to any skate park in the world and there's fucking five kids wearing it. Like, yep. you don't ride for Protect, do you? Yeah, I do. Oh, okay. Shit. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Is, that, is that new? Yeah, it's sort of. It's kind of like, it's not really like blown up, but I do, but it's just like, yeah. So when, when did that start? When I got that fucking gold helmet, I think. Okay. Because, um, okay. It was Dave Brumlow working in there before. Dave Brumlow? Hang on. <laughs> Davenport, my bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get okay. those two yep. mixed up. 
And um, just because they're weird last names to me. <laughs> I've never like encountered those last you names. You just used to having two first names, so yeah. if somebody has a last name, you're mad. Yeah, I'm pissed and something. Like, Why can't you guys be weird? Yeah. Davenport. Yeah. The man, he, he's the one that hooked me up in the first place. I seen the gold flake and I was like, that is so sick. Yeah. Like, at first, I was like, it might be too much gold, but. Nah. Um, and I was at the Van Skate Park in Huntington Beach and he hooked it up. Gave me two helmets, I believe. And I gave one away, kept that one. And, um, I just, I don't know. I just like the shiny. It's just, it looks cool. Yeah, it's good. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he started all that. And then now he no longer works for pro tech. And, um, they've been bought and sold a few times, I think. Right. Really? I don't pay attention. Yeah, what was Vans much. owned it. And then like a paintball company owned it. Does a paintball company still own it? I, I think they know. might've sold it too. I, I'm not certain. I know it's just the, the back end of pro tech has changed a lot. Yeah. Oh. But I know they, uh, I guess they sponsor you, and I know they sponsor Hawk. Yeah, you know, and which is sick. So, when your first paying sponsor was Solon, yeah, did you ever have a real job, or were you when you were a kid was the first way you were making money riding shows and stuff? Uh, the first way I made money was definitely riding shows. Was that for Bar Spinner? Yeah, he was like the first show company I worked with. Yeah, and then um, my only real job so far, I, I worked valet. For like two years. Okay. At like the Angel Stadium. At first I was doing private parties and stuff, but I think I started having too much fun in people's cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I worked at the Angel Stadium and then I just got sick of working at like dealing, like catering to rich people that are yep. just snobs. Like I just don't like snobby people. Yeah. And um, I remember one day like, my boss was there, and I didn't really like him. I mean, you can't really <laughs> like your boss too much. And um, I, I was sitting there, and this guy can't kind of came out drunk. And I, I hate when people are drunk or buzzed and try to drive their car. Yeah, that's how my sister lost her dad. Okay. And um, so I just I have like that deep hate for it. <laughs> it's like it's a reasonable you, thing. You to can hate. walk. Dude. It's a reasonable You can get thing an Uber. Hate. There's so many yeah. things. And he like slams this ticket to get my to get his keys in my chest. And he's like talking about his nice car, and I, I was like, "Well, you could just, you should just call a cab. Like your keys are locked up. Like you were being cool, though. Yeah, you know, I was like, like you, you, you're kind of, kind of. Was there. it? Is it part of the job when you do valet? You should watch out for that shit. I don't. Um, I it was or did you just kind of. It's kinda, kind of a gray area. Yeah. yeah. Like he was, he wasn't absolutely hammered. Wasn't like tripping, but he was getting his kind of like stumble with a slur. Well, if you can notice somebody yeah, is exactly. drunk by the way they look without seeing them hold the drink, they sure as hell should exactly. Be so he slammed that in my in my chest and was like, "Go get my car." And I was like, oh, "I don't know. You should probably just like can someone give you a ride or." And he was kind of being an asshole, I guess. And um, I was like, dude, I'm not going to get your keys for you. Like, you can just take a hike. Like, your keys are going to be here. Like, uh, I'm going to give them to the restaurant. Come back and get them in the morning. Yeah. I don't think we're allowed to do that. But I was like, whatever, dude. You're already, yeah, it, was you're, a, it was a judgment call. You're already being a dick. It was a judgment call. And he kind of, like, puffed his chest at me. And I was like, dude. Is he a big dude? I remember him being taller than me. Yeah. I'm not very tall, so he could have been an average dude. So he was 5'3"? <laughs> yeah, 5'1 <five>, and a <laughs> half. And he kind of, like, puffed his chest at me. And I just, like, took my name badge off. And uh, I thought he was going to punch me. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because he was like started screaming at me and then so my boss comes out and like breaks up hands him the keys guy takes off like like a rich asshole floors it out of the bar was he driving some yeah, rich guy car yeah nice a little nice Mercedes yeah and um boss is like oh you can't be doing that like oh, I'll fire you and I just took my shirt off right there like handed him the shirt handed him the name badge and I was like yeah, have a good day and he's like you're still working and I was like I'm clearly not and now I'm not like <laughs> I'm done with this bullshit. I'm going to go ride my bike. Yeah. So I just went, I think I caught a van session after that or something. That's, that's cool. what I wanted to do that's anyways. Cool. Yeah, like yeah, I was, yeah. I only worked at the angel stadium. It was only like two miles away. Yeah. So and I was just like, my boss like messaged me the next day. Well, could you come and work today? I was like, dude, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Like you're an asshole. Just like that guy's an asshole. Yeah. And I almost hit him. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, it's one of those situations where, I get that it's a weird gray area, but it's like, if you're going to hire somebody, you should probably have their back in a situation like that. And like, Especially something like that. I guarantee there's a way, had that guy gone and killed somebody, they could have sued the company. Yeah, I was just like, I mean, I've seen people more fucked up drive, but it's like, you can get in a car crash sober. But if you get in a car crash drunk, it's definitely going to fall back on us. Yeah. I had to do the keys. Yeah. 
I don't want that on my fucking karma. Like, yeah, yeah. No, I, I hear I that. So that you, from there, you never got another real job. No, just riding shows then. Yeah, or? Just just did that, and then that's why I was like, well, kind of like need to make more money, or I'm gonna go back to work. Like, yeah, so I just did what anybody should do and worked harder. Yeah, and just. I still have fun. I'm not going to fucking say I'm training, but I was just like, I want to be good at what I like doing. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. So I just started pedaling at quarters fast. <laughs> there's, there's this weird stigma where people frown upon taking something seriously. And the bottom line is you never get paid for doing something that you love to do unless you embrace it similarly to a job. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you have to kind of, yeah. you have to work hard. You have to try hard. You have to be focused. You can't really just be like, I feel like cruising around and not scaring myself and then people are given, you know what I mean? You yeah. can't do that. So what was the first time, was it when you first started getting paid by, by when Fly picked you up? Is that when you were kind of okay to live or was it when Van started paying you monthly or? Um, I may do with Fly because I, okay. I already, I already came from nothing. So any type of money I could survive. So you could live on a thousand bucks a month. Yeah. Like I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I got this. And, um, so that, that helped a lot. And then I think I was living with Lorenzo Fiel, like one of my good friends, car buddy that rides. We grew up riding together and, uh, he just let me crash at his house for free. So I was like, I'm taking advantage of this. I'm going to save my money and I'll find an opportunity to like get my own house. And I did, I live at FOD trails and can afford that. That's awesome. So that's cool. I got a ramp and trills and no one bothers me <laughs> and you're far enough away to where yes. you're not doing the bullshit yeah i don't have to deal with family either so that's cool <laughs> <laughs> but you're close enough if you want to yeah be around them, you and i don't have to deal with rich snobs so that's cool how did you end up getting on fly um so foo at epic back to foo that's crazy yeah one of your first bikes comes for him yep. and then he's involved in this yeah foo's the man because you so. were first on fly for parks correct um i was you're on an se frame and fly parts yeah that's how it all started okay um, I think it was you and Matt Rowe that were sponsoring for parts. Yeah. Whatever happened to him? I don't know. I think but, he rides mountain bikes or something. Someone uh, was telling me. I don't know. He's still the man. He was awesome. It's yeah, insane. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, so I, I was on SE and then fly parts. So that was cool. Just Paycheck from each. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was good. And then, but David wanted me ultimately to ride. So, so Fu, oh. did Fu talk to Pova or did Fu talk to Dave and Fly? I think Fly, Pova or? talked to Fu and was like, we're kind of looking for somebody for Fly. Yeah. And I think originally, originally they were looking at someone else. I can't remember who it was, but I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm down to talk to them. That'd be cool. Yeah. Just let me know. And like, just kind of forgot about it. It was just like, didn't think much of it. Yep. So it was a lot of talk. That's BMX. So, I would, yeah, you just kind of take it and go, that'd be cool. Don't yeah, get your yeah, hopes yeah. up. That is a cool brand. Call me sometime. Yeah. Yeah. I've always liked Fly. Or like, um, I remember I watched, like, the Etnies Grounded a lot. Yeah. Because of Sergio. Yeah, and of course. Joe Rich. But, yeah. And I was just like, wow, fucking Sergio is so stylish, dude. Like, yeah. I was like, that's a cool company. Never thought I'd ride for the company. It's all the way in Spain. I'm not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like. I think bringing Pova on board there to help with team stuff is arguably the best thing Fly's ever done. Oh, Lemmy from Motorhead? You mean? Pova looks just like Lemmy from Motorhead. No, Lemmy is dead. Yeah, but Pova's reincarnated Lemmy. I hung out with Lemmy one night. Really? Yeah, my brother. That's so sweet. Was, he wasn't with Motorhead, though. It was a band called the Hellcat. I don't know if you're familiar with them. It was like a weird rockabilly band that he was in. Yeah. Yeah, my brother knew somebody affiliated with him. Anyway. Uh, I have to talk to him all the time. To Lemmy? You pray to him? No, I... Pova. <laughs> he looks just like Lemmy, dude. Pova's awesome. But I mean, he, he's the one that kind of, when he came on fly, he brought um, Shane Weston, that was pretty hot at the time, and free coasters were hot. And yeah. they were, you know, I, I don't know, Shane kind of faded. I think he's just from a weird part of the country and stuff, but he was always an incredible rider. But then he brought on Devin, and Devin yeah. brought a lot of new life to fly. Yeah. And then he brought on you. So between you and Devin, and obviously the classics like Sergio and whatnot, between you, Devin, and Sergio, that's fucking solid. Yeah. You know? Sergio is like a one-man team already. Yeah. It's insane. Well, I think it's cool because you guys all do such, like, what Devin does is so different. Sure. No one else on our team. Well, I mean, Courage, but let's say no one else on our team could even fucking 
compete with what Devin does. It's so insane. But yeah. Courage has his own style to it. He's it's incredible. Insane, dude. Yeah. Oh, I think like Courage. No offense, to Devin is my favorite street rider right now. Yeah. And he's also a very humble, kind human. I think when Courage can get his uh, visa, visa situation <laughs> sorted out, he's going to be the guy that God could help us all. Be, <laughs> I'm not going to say beating Garrett every time, but he's the one guy out there that can hang. Oh, he can hang. You it's, know what I mean? Insane. Like, we'll see. And I, I'm excited to see that push Garrett, dude. <laughs> you know, because yeah, Garrett's like, so good. Where is this going? <laughs> it's going to be a good thing. When did you first start getting hooked up by Vans? I can't even remember. It was a long time ago. I was doing shows for Gail Webb, and she kept calling Steve. Steve Van Dorn. Yeah. And oh, that's awesome. Like, and I was like, I don't know if you should call the owner of that, that Gail, but she's just like <laughs> older and was like, oh, no, Larry, it's fine. I've known him for like 30 years. I'm like, okay. okay. Like, <laughs> go ahead. And she kept doing that, and I think that kind of got Jerry's attention, possibly. I don't Steve know. Steve was like, get this kid shoes. I don't want this lady Shut him up already. Like... <laughs> She was like being my momager, dude. She'd call him every day. She's like, I called him again. I'm like, dude, he might have blocked your number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I would have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, like, that was cool. I just kept, I'd, I'd get random shoes. I remember when at first, like, first I got a package, it was just random stuff. And I was like, well, it's not really my size. Like, it's a size. Too it was big. literally like, and I was like, yeah. I'll make it work, whatever. Of so course. I was just like, dude, this is better than, like, riding in these blown out i think i was still riding vans but they were just Probably. destroyed like yeah i i tried to ride nikes and and those like soles were thick but they didn't grip and then when i blew out like a 70 dollar pair of shoes i was like and if you're buying 70 dollar ones are probably the discount ones you know my dad's like trying to punch me and he's like i just bought those i'm like oh <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah when did you actually you just kind of got on the legit team this year right yeah. that's pretty crazy that you were on that long and yeah which is awesome yeah, I've, I was always supporting Vans. Like, I mean, they've always supported you. Yeah, they always had my back or my feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell us a uh, a good Jerry Batter story. Uh, I wrestled him at Texas Toast. <laughs> oh man, we were at the Airbnb, and uh, we're we me and Jerry just always kind of throw subtle jabs at each other, like talk shit. I'm the 95 world champ, and I'm like, you're washed <laughs> up. Like, <laughs> yeah. He was like, all right, you know what? You think you're tough, and I didn't. I think he wrestled in high school or something. Was he Was he drinking at the time? No, no, he doesn't. He's already sober. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, me and him, we don't need to drink to be dumb. Yeah, noticed. <laughs> and, uh, so we wrestle, and yeah, no, he beat me. He's got dad strength on me. I could admit to that. Yeah. And, uh, but also, there was a there was a technical foul because we're wrestling, and one of us kicked the dresser. And the TV started to fall, so I caught it. And then Jerry started choking me. <laughs> well, I was holding the TV from landing on us. You're like, I'm trying to save us a thousand but bucks. He's already, he was strong as hell. I was like, God damn, I didn't know your old ass still had it. That's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was probably one of the most memorable moments. I still bring it up to this day. He's like, yeah, you just remember that. <laughs> one of those things yeah. where it's like why are you on the pro team yet well i kind of wrestled the man you know the boss and it's like okay all these years later we're good <laughs> yeah. that's awesome he probably went home and had to like ice his whole body for like a week after he's like ice baths. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 between uh working with pova at fly and working with batters you kind of got thrown in with the uh, the shoe bosses of bmx yeah yeah i, I think about that a lot and i'm like Hope this doesn't make things awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, they're both so good and professional. What they yeah, do. nah. There's there's can. never been one time that anything's been. Yeah, well, those guys. Are, I think they're cool. I know Pope has judged some Vans events and stuff. I mean, I'll, I I give him crap when I if I ever go to Pope's house and I'll move his he's out of the way and put my Vans there. <laughs> <laughs> what when you were growing up? Who were some of the riders you were psyched on? Like, who did you want to? Like, you, you have kind of a. Going high, doing big, you know, doing high tabletops and stuff style. Like, who were you psyched watching growing up? Um, Chase Hawk and, like, Mike Aiken. Mike Aiken was always, like, my favorite. Yeah. Like, I always just watch his videos, like, all the old stuff, everything. Like, all the fit DVDs. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I couldn't watch it enough. It's crazy watching Aiken footage because any of his parts could come out today and it would still be. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. You know, it could still finish a video today. Yeah. Just that style is completely unmatched. Yeah, it's just it never. No one, no one will ever match it. Yeah, it's just everything he did, like everything falls into one. The fact that he just has like a flannel on, flapping while he's doing a turn down. It's like yeah, the perfect I would storm. Never do that in my life. So, 
I tuck my shirt in sometimes. Did you ever get to ride with Aiken when he was on top of the game? Or no, nah, I wish. Yeah, it'd been like a dream. <laughs> yeah, 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 man, he's something else. I guess Hawk. You get to ride with Hawk a lot. Yeah, a little shit bag. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> not a little chase, but we give each other shit, so I have to keep it up. Or else. Seems like all these relationships you have involve you being a dick to people. Yeah, no, that is great. I'm always a dick to him. Chase Hawk, <laughs> great. I'm always a dick nah, to him. Nah, Chase is the man, but he's like. No one ever gives him shit, so I feel like I have to be the one to give him shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I call him Chase Pigeon. That's kind of offensive. Yeah. Yeah. You should apologize next time you do that. Probably not. What, uh, what What's your take on everything going on this day and age with, with social media and stuff? I notice you don't get too overly caught up in it. Yeah, no. You probably me could and Jason be, were actually just talking be better about at it. it. Me and Jason were just talking about that, and like, I probably should be better at it, but also like... I feel like it gets people stoked when I do post something because I'm not fucking blowing their feet up and knowing them. Like when they when they see my name post something, they look at it. <laughs> yeah, it actually, it like means more. Are any of your sponsors on you to do more on it? Or is everybody pretty chill with? Everyone's been pretty chill, but I, I have heard some stuff like, "All right, well, you need to post this here," and I'm like, "Yep, all right, got it." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's just becoming such a big part of sponsorship these days. Yeah, it's everything. And, I feel like you know, and it it, it sucks if there's a situation where you were going to get something and you didn't get it based on you don't have as many followers as this guy, even if you're performing yeah. the best. You know, doesn't matter how good you are. It's who do you know? I mean, that's why these idiots on YouTube and shit yeah. can make all this money and have all this big following and be endorsing brands and they don't do anything. You know, I mean it 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 bothers me about that stuff like i understand like teach their own hey you're going to make your money you gotta make your money that's cool but like when you don't have a talent like i'm not like picking at anyone but like i see like vloggers out there that have no talent in anything they can just talk and like relate to you that's cool no one gives a fuck go away yeah in my opinion i like when people are talented at something like it's cool i know you're using your talent for something that's i'm a bit older than you but when i grew up it was just so important to have an identity, like going to high school and stuff yeah. and being like, okay, well, these are the football guys. We're the guys that ride BMX. These are guys are skaters. These are guys play video games. Whatever. You know what I mean? Everybody kind of had their thing they did. And it just seems like this day and age, like people don't really have that. They don't do anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's just like, you look at these vloggers and stuff. And I think it would be cool. If it was like, oh, this is the guy that's a top BMX rider who does this. Then there's this guy over here who's a professional basketball player and he does this. So yeah. You kind of get a glimpse into it, but so much of it is like, I'm a random guy. Yeah, This exactly. is me. I get my, this This is a 12 minute long video and it's going to consist of me going to Starbucks and getting some yeah. really douchey coffee. And then, um, exactly gonna, like, you know, jump on a trampoline. That's like, exactly what I feel like too. It's like, and it's like, they're like, they literally not good at anything. They just can relate to you. Yeah. And for some reason, people are interested in seeing what pe- other people do on a day to day when you can just get your ass off the couch and go exactly do what they're doing right now without watching it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's crazy. I mean, I watched a, a Harry Main video a couple, it was, maybe it was close to a year ago. And um, Harry gets a lot of hate. I've always liked Harry. Harry's awesome, incredible writer. He's insane. I, I've always, um, you know, he's always been. A friend to me. We don't talk all the time. We've always yeah. been cool. But he put out a video and it was something about BMX and I was psyched. I haven't seen Harry ride in a long time. Yeah. And it was one of those things where it was like a 12 minute video and I had to sift through it to see like four clips. Yeah. And it had a shitload of views and his followers love it. And I'm just like, God damn it. It's, it's just not for me. I thought about like when vlogs first started happening, I was like, oh, I might start like a car vlog. Mm-hmm. How to build a drift car with a thousand dollars? I yeah. think it'd be hilarious. Like, okay, this is what you need to do, and like, and then just destroy the fuck out of yeah, the car, yeah, yeah. like, and laugh about it. But like, it'd be like not me talking about what I ate or yeah, what I'm eating. It'd be, be like, a reason. Yeah. Look at this car, and then okay, so next we're gonna do like a rock crawler. Tune in next week. Yeah, and like, <laughs> I think things like that are great. I mean, even like the initial YouTube success was like what the. Remember, my buddies and I would always watch like the epic mealtime guys that would make ridiculous <laughs> ridiculous meals and eat them and stuff just shit like that was funny yeah or like there's the dude that would like put shit in a blender like oh, i got the new iphone i'm gonna put it in a blender <laughs> like like when there was like something to it like it was yeah. awesome but when it's just like now it's like hey you want to guess what i'm gonna put in this blender yeah. um some ice and a banana <laughs> like, it's like oh surprising how, how do you end up getting into all the car stuff that usually doesn't walk hand in hand with oh, being poor oh jeez I know but now <laughs> I'm back to being poor because of it yeah, yeah, yeah now that you're making more money than you've ever made yeah it's just like 
um, car thing. My dad's always been a mechanic and yep. he's always been into racing. Always. So, like, I started racing oval track when I was 14. I was a year legally allowed to do it. You don't need a driver's okay. license. Just on the closed course. So, that was always fun. Um, but when I was younger, is you know, like, you get to a point where, like, I don't want to hang out with my dad and his friends. Uh-huh. Yep. So, I even no matter how cool cars were, it was like, I want to go to the skate park. Yep. So I just stopped doing that. And um, the skate park was next door. So I started sneaking over. I'd hop the fence. Like before the races started, I'd go fucking. Were you already riding BMX before that? No. no. Oh, so that's kind of one of the ways you got introduced yeah. to going to the track with your dad. Yeah. And... I, I was riding skateboards and stuff. Yep. And I was yep. like, went over there and I didn't have a bike or anything. And I just, I just watch. I was, I think it was before actually I started skating. I went over there. I think actually, I had nothing. I just watch. Yeah. And I was like, that's crazy. And like watch people jump in the phone pit. And I was like, but I it never like, I never understood what it was. I was just like, you guys are all insane. Yeah. yeah. I was like, you guys are all crazy. And I'd sneak back to the racetrack when it was almost time to be over. And yeah. Get back in the pits and we'd leave. <laughs> and then just from seeing your dad do that and whatnot, you were just always around cars and stuff. Yeah, or? always every, every day, like reach in there and start it. I'm like, no, I don't want to. I'd rather go ride and <laughs> I need your help. Like, so I'd just be like stuck working on like an old junkie Camaro. It was like old Nova's all the time. And, um, I just never paid attention too much until I got like a little older and got like when I turned 17, I think I actually started paying attention and was like, cars are sick. Yeah. Like I've always been into cars and like could drive them and stuff. Like I think I started driving when I was like, whoa, maybe like 10, nine, somewhere in my dad would be on his lap. And I just control the gas with his knee and just push down on it. That's funny. Hold the steering wheel out in Victorville. I grew up like in Victorville. Yeah middle of nowhere so it didn't matter yeah, yeah i yeah. just go <laughs> yeah and um yeah so it's always been in the cars yeah what do you have right now um i have a 1985 toyota pickup okay and then just like a chevy silverado just to drive and then a 90 sx with a 1jz okay and well, i still have like the shell of the other car but that's that's it right now that's good for you, right? Only I, two? Yeah, I had, <laughs> at one point, I think I had four cars. I remember you had four cars and no house. Yeah. Like, no place to live. <laughs> yeah, no. It's just, oh, I always trade around. Like, I don't, people think, like, I have a lot of money and, like, buy cars. But, like, I, I started out with, like, $3,500. Yeah. I think I bought a Jeep Cherokee or something a long time ago. Traded that for that. And I ended up trading for a, which I wish I still had, a, a 2001 uh, Ford diesel. And seven three is a good turbo diesel. Traded that for a eighty six Toyota Four Runner. The red one. Yeah, that old red. That thing was sweet. That thing was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that thing was cool. And I traded around, and so I, I mean, I've made money. I've rarely lost money doing it. Yeah, I've always like kind of evened out. But I remember I, I bought a car for like six hundred bucks one time and sold it for thirty five hundred, and then took that. Excuse me, and then um. I think I bought like a Volkswagen, turned around and sold that. And I ended up with a, a pre-runner that I paid, which funny, funny story. Um, I paid five grand for this pre-runner and I, I knew what it was when I was buying it. My uncle built it like before I was into BMX. My uncle built this truck from the ground up, like brand new. Okay. It's a 94 Toyota. So he bought it like when I was two. <laughs> Okay. And then, um, so I bought it and it was all, it's all still his truck. No shit. And I drove it to his house and he goes, no way. How'd you find it? Just randomly on Craigslist. No way. Total coincidence. Yeah. Total random. And just drove up to his house and like knocked on the door. He came out and like his face was just like, what in the hell? And <laughs> my aunt hates that truck. Cause That's it, would, awesome. it would take all his attention yeah, all the yeah, time yeah, when yeah. they were like married. She came out like, mother fucking truck's back and i was like <laughs> <laughs> i was like yep it's going right in the garage too we got to work on it she's like no that's so cool <laughs> she was pissed it was the funniest <laughs> and then my cousin when he was a baby he was watching that truck get built the one that works up north in um uh modesto okay and he was watching that truck get built when he was a little guy and like try to drive the truck when he was, cause he's around the truck the whole time yeah, and i was yeah, like yeah. here dude he's always wanted to give it a rip and i just threw the keys to him he was like it's kind of a crazy story. That is crazy. I mean, I ended up like I paid five grand for it, did a little work, and I sold it for ten grand. Nice. So I always try to just like at least break even. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's you know doubling your money. I guess yeah. you know not putting the labor and whatnot. Yeah. What else do you do besides ride bikes and work on cars? 
Uh, I go to the gym here and there. It's yeah. fun. I feel like I'd go crazy, like stir crazy if I didn't. Yeah. Uh, I mess with RC cars and just like probably my dogs. Just like always play with them. Um, go to Wing Wednesday with JK Good. Yeah, Wing Wednesday is good. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't sound vegan. Nah, not vegan at all. I'm like a, I'm like a meditarian. What do you do at the gym? Is there a, do you try to do things that affect BMX or do you just like to work out? No, nah, I would try to do things that like help, like balance. Um, I try to keep like my body awareness up because falling sucks. Yeah. If you're not aware, you just splat. Yeah. Well, I see you splat plenty still. So. Oh yeah. No, it works, but I still <laughs> somehow get out of it. Not <laughs> um, but uh, just core explosive stuff. Um, you have a trainer? No. Just figure it out? Yeah, I never had a trainer. Do you physically go to a gym, though, or do you have equipment at home? Yeah, I go to the gym. Okay. Yeah. Multiple days a week? Uh, when I'm home and I'm free, it's six days a week. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Hour a day or what? Yeah. It could be like an hour. If I, if I'm busy around home, it's like a 45-minute, like just getting it out. Like, yeah. Um, Depends if, I don't know, like some mornings I, I get there and I swear the food's trying to come back up the whole time so i'm like in there just trying to like not throw up <laughs> yeah so it turns into a longer process because i have to drag it out how long have you been doing that you've been going to the gym for a number of years or i think since i was like 19 or 18 somewhere okay there. yeah is that do you see some positives coming from that out of, when it comes to riding uh yes definitely 100 percent. and i feel like it would help um help prolong my career when you go do like a minute run at a contest, like you are you winded at the end? Do you feel good? Like um, recently, no. But before, because I just started getting back into the gym again, I kind of took like a while off. Okay. But I was getting winded, and I was like dying and just yeah, ugh, yeah, get lightheaded, yeah. dizzy, and like I feel like going as fast as I do, I do, I pretty much work like not work harder but like my body's working harder because now my adrenaline's freaking out and i'm like i'm hitting more things than most people because i yeah i'm getting across the course faster i'm not trying to put anybody else down i'm not saying i'm better than anybody yeah, by any yeah, means yeah but i just i hit more obstacles usually yeah because i'm going faster and it and it's like i could easily just slow down but it's the way i like to ride it's definitely higher risk as well to where you know if you're trying to prolong the career like you said you yeah know, it definitely sucks it's but it's fun. So, I mean, if I, my dad always told me, he's like, the day BMX is not fun for you, you might as well get a normal job because you're not going to be making a killing at BMX. And if it's not fun, what's the point? So, when, I mean. I mean, you still feel that way? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I'm, I have so much fun. Like, if it wasn't fun, like, at all, like, if I was like, this sucks, I wouldn't be riding a bike, dude. I'd go get a normal job. I mean, it sounds like the car shit you do, if you wanted to take it more seriously, yeah. you could make a living doing, you know? Yeah, I mean, if I had that attitude towards BMX, I wouldn't do it. I'd do it because it's fun. Like, And the fact, like, it's still, I, I remember saying it when I was, like, 15, like, the fact that I get paid to do something I love is just a bonus. Like, Yeah. Like, I, like even if I didn't get paid, I'd still ride my bike because it's fun. Do you think you'd ride it as hard as you do if you didn't get paid? Yeah, because that's, like, the fun part. Yeah, going fast and high <laughs> and scaring yourself. yourself. A little bit, yeah. 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 Who goes higher than you? Uh, there's like a few people. I just I feel, like I, I feel like I get lucky. <laughs> it's just like uh, uh, Chris James. Yeah, I guess I. Dylan Lewis. Yeah. Matt can go higher. Matt Cordova can go higher than me. Just, yeah. His ankle's been bothering him. Uh, Dylan Stark definitely. He's Dude, a Dylan nut job. Blast some shit. Like he's, he's out of his goddamn. He mind. would have beat me that first year of U.S. Open when he was in it, but he blew his tire up. Yeah. I got I got lucky. Like, well, I mean. I can't like discredit myself that much, but it would have been a messed up battle. Like one of us would have destroyed a bike. It would have been a fight to the death. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because we've always done that since compound. Like, like, hey, how high can you hear that? Like, well, I can hear higher than that. And like, all of a sudden, it's still like, taking forty cranks at a quarter pipe. I'm like, God damn it. he's a savage man. <laughs> he does not he's, care. He's, yeah, like, at all. I love it. I love watching him ride. <laughs> That's a he's a talented. And guy, now man. he's got suspension under him. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know enough about mountain bikes to have an opinion, but like, oh I can't God. imagine he's not the baddest motherfucker out there. Oh, it's gonna be gnarly. He's just getting more and more into it. Just... Is, is he sponsored and stuff for that? Uh, no idea. I'm sure he will be. Yeah, he has to be. Damn, that's crazy. All right, well, uh, you know, wrapping things up, the last question everybody has to answer: Who is your favorite rider of all time? 
My favorite, like, of all time? Yeah. I to, it's so hard to pick because there's so many different, like, styles, varieties, and everything. And there's so many, like, underground <laughs> dudes. And yeah, but you have to pick one. I don't want to pick one. You have to pick one. Can I pick five? You can pick five, but the first one you say is going to count. Ah, uh, you're an asshole. I'll just say Mike Aiken because I can never get enough of just watching him three at jump is enough. Yeah. Just Do you still watch his videos? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like when I feel like no motivation to ride or something, I'll just watch his video. And then it gives you less motivation to ride because you can't make it look like that. Yeah. And then and then I'll <laughs> I'll watch Chase too, just because like it's all kind of the like gives me the same feeling, gets me stoked. Yeah. Dude, even man, watching a hawk ride, just the manual lines and stuff. Yeah, right? it's the insane. shit he figures out. You know who, I love the way he thinks about the course. Who's really been impressing me is watching Watts just do a straight three. Yeah. On a dirt jump. Yeah. He's oh, kind of got, it doesn't look like Mikey, but it's like, Beautiful. he's got his own three. Oh, yeah. And it's like, you can just do a 360 and I can watch you do that shit all day. Yeah, it's so sick. And especially when he throws a one foot table in there, it's just like, <laughs> okay. Dude, he's, that's one of the dudes right now. Yeah, he's a but man. You're definitely one of the dudes right now. You're one of my favorite guys to watch. And thank you. I'm happy that you're, you're kicking ass and winning shit. And I'm happy that you're, I think you're finally, uh, getting closer to what you deserve as far as being able to do it for a living and stuff. You know, you got a, got the drink deal, you got the bike deal, you got the shoe deal, you know, like your bills are paid. Yeah. Like, that's, I'm, I'm just thought about that the other day and I'm really stoked that I never like, not like changed the way I like to ride Yeah, for getting paid. Cause like I just kept doing the same thing I've done since I was like 13. Yeah. I just kept doing it. Like I, it didn't matter. Like if I, none of that stuff happened cause I'd still be doing this. Yeah. Like, and I'm very grateful for like vans and 5150 and like fly bikes. Like they, without them, I wouldn't be going on trips, obviously. Yeah. And I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. Yeah. Because I can't afford that. There's no way. But yeah. so thank you to all those guys. Yeah. They're all good people. You know, I, I say it a lot and maybe there's no truth to it. And it's me living in a, a lie in my own brain. But I, I sincerely feel like guys like you, guys like me, guys that have put all the time and effort into the BMX thing because we give a fuck. If we put this much time and effort into anything, we could find success. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the amount of hours and whatnot you've devoted to riding your bike. If you were to put it into learning the stock market, you'd be a multi, multi, multi. Yeah. I, I think you know about what I that mean? sometimes. But, but, but you'd also have a lot less fun. Yeah. When I, when I was <laughs> when I was younger, dude, I was committed to going down the road my dad did. I wanted to become a Marine. That was it. Yeah. Like, and he said, hell no. Yeah. So like that, that's, I mean, that's one of the things like, I always like support our troops and everything, but that's. Like I always have that like special spot in my heart for all the troops out there. Like yeah, of course. Because I wanted to be you guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Have you done any of the the military shows with the bands? Uh, no, I would love to though. That would be cool, especially yeah. if you have that connection. And you yeah. can go out there and, and relate to them a bit. But that's cool. No, I mean, uh, you good? Anything else you want to say? Um, Final question: Why do you hate shirts so much? Um, why do you like shirts so much? I don't know. I guess I don't still have that Larry Edgar rock hard body. I think you answered the question. <laughs> I think it's a good note to end on. <laughs> All right. That does it for this week. Big thanks to Larry Edgar for the time. Follow him on Instagram at Larry underscore Edgar. And remember, it doesn't count if you don't pull the rollback. See you next week.